starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, Father, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, Father, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about I love it when uh, we get to church and we are forwarding or sending or sharing our YouTube and Facebook. So if you're at home, I want to welcome you. And I want to uh, build to turn down the volume. I can hear myself. <laughs> but if you're at home, I can't hear you, but you can share. Okay, so you can share. Uh, the link to someone. Uh, you got it on email on YouTube? And if you're on Facebook, well, just forward it. Send it to people that uh, are in Minnesota uh, or anywhere else. Um, it's fun to see uh, our worship being uh, live streaming because uh, you get people from all over the world basically watching it. So that's, that's awesome. We're going to continue doing this, but that doesn't mean that you get to be at home comfy and Pastor Ramon wakes up at five in the morning to come and do a worship here live. Okay, so let's be fair. So I hope to see you here. Um, this is our fifth Sunday uh, of Lent. So that means that Sunday coming up, it is Palm Sunday. It is Palm Sunday. I know. Facebook people, sorry, I got, I got to show this right here to those that are here, okay? So I know you might not see me here, but uh, we're getting ready for Palm Sunday. So um, the palms came in this past, this, this past week. Um, Susan, they are in the fridge over in Trinity Center. Okay, if you're wondering when they are. Um, we got the, the branches already ready. So I hope that um, uh, we are ready with the songs also. And uh, we have a wonderful worship. We got it outside. We walk in, you know, like normal. We, we didn't get to do that last year. We skipped it. So, it is good to be here, isn't it? Yes. yes. Say good morning to who's next to you, please. Good morning. Good morning. Awesome. Good morning. Awesome. Good morning. Awesome. Let us, begin, let us begin our worship on this day. A walk to, um, a path to walk. That's the message today. We all make decisions, we all take a path, and we ask God to guide us. And in doing that, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Blessed be the Holy, the Holy One of Israel, the Word made flesh, the power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and our neighbor. Gracious God, 
In Christ yeah. Jesus, you come among us as and a light shining in darkness. We, we confess our failure to welcome this light. Forgive us and renew our hope so that we may live in the light of your grace and welcome the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as you're able. If you're at home, you can stand up. Make your home a place of worship. I will encourage you to do that. And those that are here, let's stand up and sing Lift High the Cross. to have your yes please to have your Bibles ready um, if you don't have your Bible with you uh, you can always find um, Bible gateway on just the uh, any search uh, application that you might have or if you have the application of Bible gateway even better because then you get to have any translation any language on that uh, application so we're gonna have our prayer of the day and the readings right after that so let us prepare for that oh God with steadfast love you draw us to yourself and in mercy you receive our prayers strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit that through life and death we may live in your son Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Amen. The first reading comes from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. 
So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also said in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The Holy Gospel according to John. Please stand as you are able. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now among those who went to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came down from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd, standing there, heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Thank you. you may be seated. I was probably around nine or ten years old and my uh, stepdad uh, worked in a company that uh, would make power, plant, power plants and this one power plant was away in the mountains and uh, my mother along with my aunt had a, a business uh, they made tortas and bring them out to all the workers and sell them because they were out, way out, out of the cities. And so uh, that was a way of making income as we were down in Mexico. So at times, it was my turn to bring the tortas to the workers. So they'll send me at this age to walk through the railroads, train tracks, um, to bring the tortas. This one specific time, um, I was coming back and uh, my stepdad gave me two rebars, those long, almost one inch rebars, because my father, my stepdad, was building a house. So 
any leftovers, anything given we can use to build this one house, we'll take it and we'll bring him home. So this time I'm carrying this rebar on my shoulders and walking for miles coming down from this place. Um, there was a guy, uh, we call him the crazy guy. He was kind of crazy. I think he did drugs and he ended up staying up there. And, but he was dangerous because he will carry a gun. And so um, this one time I walk into the railroad, ra uh, uh, train tracks and far in the distance I see something moving off to the side. And it was that guy cleaning a gun. I was like, oh boy. Now, I think. I'm a little kid. All right. So the reason we walk through the train tracks is because it's faster. They're going through the road. I mean, if we did, I don't know how far it was, but I think it was about 20 miles. If we walk through the road where the cars will drive up that way, I had to double the walk. So I didn't think it twice. <laughs> I turned around as soon as I saw the guy cleaning the gun and went back the long way, carrying those rebars with me. It, the decision was made the moment I saw that. Um, I say this because in life, we make decisions. A lot of the times, they're not easy to make. They're not easy decisions to make. And if you think about, think about when was that one, or what was that one decision you made, you know, that it was difficult for you. Think about it. As I talk to people to make those decisions, you know, very rare I hear this sentence. Very rare. I feel that God, I feel this is what God is telling me to do. I hear more so, I feel it on my gut. That's what I should you do. <laughs> it feels like it's the right thing to do. And, and you hear those terms, right? But it's rare that you hear, I feel that this is what God is telling me to do. I feel this is what God wants me to do. I feel that this is the decision God wants me to make. The story today, you know, Jesus is getting ready for what? To go to the cross. You know, to die. And he has to make that decision on his own. But he's going to the Father to make that decision. Nowadays, I've seen it more. I see, I see it more. When people have troubles, you know where they go? To the social media. This is what's happening to me. What should I do? Right? And nowadays in social media, there's hundreds of expertise. Right? There's a lot of people that know everything. And there is bunch of things of what you should do. Jesus, I, I, I think even if Jesus had Facebook or whatever else is out there, um, I don't think he would have posted anything. He would have just gone to the Father and make that decision with the help. Now a day, we don't do that. We don't go to the Father. We make those decisions on our gut. And I think this passage is inviting us to make decisions along with Christ. And it could be nothing. It could be just turning around not to get killed through a guy with a gun, right? Just nothing. Or it could be something difficult. When Jesus is praying, when he's saying, you know, I, yeah, I want my Father to be glorified. But let me just think about it. He's thinking about it because he knows what dying on the cross is. It's not. You know, we always think about the crucifixion as three nails going through your flesh, right? Mm, I think that's the least of the pain. 
get in three nails through your flesh. That's the least of the pain. Before you get to the cross, he knows what's going to happen to him. Before he even carries that cross up to where he's going to be put on, he knows he's going to be whew, whipped, not with the chancla, but with a whip that is going to take pieces of flesh of your own body. He knows that. He knows that he's going to, oh, right? He knows the care in the cross is difficult by itself. Because the, the word I don't think is this nice, you know, carrying it feels nice and soft. Again, building the house, my stepdad built, we had to carry wood from almost the same place with no soft edges. Walking for hours on that on your shoulder, yeah, it kills splinters all over. Jesus knew that. And then putting him through and putting those nails and the time lifting out, he knew that his shoulders were going to get out of place. He knew that. He knew that hanging there, not for hours, I mean, you know, he didn't stay too long in there, but people who get crucified will stay on that cross for hours, sometimes for days until their muscles give up. And if it didn't give up, what would they do? They grab a big old hammer and slash it on the knees. So what? The body needs to drop and suffocate. He knew that. So the three nails, no big deal, right? I got this. He knew it. So that's why when he's praying, on that garden and he kneels down and his sweat is as blood is because he knows what he's going to go through honestly i don't know if i were to make that decision i will choose for something else i would say i'm dying for who no way <laughs> i'm not doing that but if i have no choice and i have to go through it not the cross Choose something else. Make it quick. Make it fast. I don't want to suffer. But Jesus knew. And even though he knew what was the suffering look like, he still went through it. He had a reason. He had a purpose. Glorify God, right? But as we read on Hebrews chapter 5, it says that... Uh, Though, uh, through suffering, Christ becomes the source of salvation. The reason behind it, the purpose behind it was you and me. It was, it was us. He was the only source of all salvation. And in regards of that, the, the gospel that was read today... The gospel tells us that he had the option to say no. But he opted to go through it. He chose this very difficult path, the cross. The reason I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up, you know, a lot of times sermons are very um, nice. It feels good to hear a good message, right? The reason is because we're going through Lent and we are about to go to the passion of Christ. Where a lot of times it's just, yeah, it's Holy Week. I'm not eating meat on that day, right? That's the sacrifice that I'm making. That's the decision that I'm making. Jesus glorified God through his own life. He is the source of all salvation for all people he is the path that he took knowing that he was not sinful 
that he was not guilty, but he was willing to go through it for you and for me. That was not an easy decision to make. But he went to God the Father and say, if it is possible to take away this cup, please. But no, at the end he, he realized that, that was, that's why he was here for. That's what John is telling us. Let your name be glorified. Let your name, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, unless it dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He knew that that had to happen in order to accomplish what he was here for. That resurrection will not happen unless he dies. Easter will not happen unless he goes through the suffering. And then on verse 27, Now my soul is troubled. We don't hear this Jesus very often. My soul is troubled? Come on, Jesus, you're a superhero. Right? He knew what the crucifixion was like. And what should I say? He's talking to the Father. What should I say, Father? Save me from this hour. Nah. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. It is for this reason that I have to this, come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Made the decision. He knew. He was God, but he humbled himself to the point of to death, to the point to be on the cross. He was God, and he humbled himself. And that's what Philippians says. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point to the cross. Yeah? He humbled himself. In our journey, in our lives, we are invited to look at the life of Jesus, to give ourselves in the way Jesus gave himself to the church, to the body, to you and to me, to choose Jesus' way. And, th and that is not an easy task. That is not an easy thing a lot of times. Because as he's telling this to the disciples, also he's saying, those who love their life, lose it. If you're going to give your life to me, if you're going to follow me, you have to give yourself up. You need to lose yourself. Not so much hate yourself, but forget about your needs and your wants. And give it all to God. And God will give you what you need and what you want. Those who love their lives lose it, and those who hate it, their lives in this world will keep it for eternal life. For eternal life. Following Jesus Christ is not easy. It's difficult. It takes work. Okay? It takes work, and it takes commitment. It takes work, and it takes commitment. Being obedient to God is even more difficult when we read scripture and we just start with the Ten Commandments just there you know you go oh my goodness that's a lot to do you know we get bad points when we look at the Ten Commandments and we're like I don't think I can do that so Jesus made it easy to the people and say okay so you want to follow my word I'll give you two commandments. Go, love God with all you got, with, with all your heart, with all your guts, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor. Right? The body and the church, that's what we are all about. If we don't do those things, we forget. We're not doing church together for the sake of the world. See, that's key, and that's what Jesus taught over and over. Monday, Thursday, 
Monday, Thursday, you know, we are coming here to see pastors wash people's feet and remember what Jesus did to the disciples. But that was not it. He was go and do like, likewise. If you want to be my disciple, forget by yourself and go serve others. You know, that's, that's the main point of that. And then, so there is some invitation to look for others. And then on Good Friday, this is how you do it. You give yourself commitment, sacrifice. Today, I think the invitation is to give God the first place on our hearts. That's all. To see what God did on the cross, his, his commitment, his love for us, took him to the cross. To love God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength. Putting God first in everything. So if you're going to make a decision in life, if you don't know what to do and you have two ways to follow, which, which path are you going to take? I'll tell you which one. The one that Jesus chose to go to the Father. And the Father will help you, will guide you. But give first place to Christ. Give your heart to the Lord. That's the first thing we ought to do as Christians, as followers of Christ. Because then the difficulties in life or the calling that we get is not a shore anymore. It's a joyful opportunity to serve God and others. It's a joyful opportunity to be able to be church for the sake of others. It's a joyful opportunity to respond to the love of God given on the cross and shown on the cross. He is our high priest. Hebrews says, and he is. And we give that honor to God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. When we get to Holy Week, I hope we all take some time to think about what that means. I still have that image. When we rented that theater, a whole theater to go out to watch The Passion of Christ. I don't know if you guys remember. We went to Gregorian or whatever Sinapolis is now. We rented a whole movie theater and we went out to see The Passion of Christ. And I'm standing, I was the first one to get out, and I'm standing there and as people are leaving, the theater, I can see that they got it. They got it. They were able to see what Christ did for us, which is what Jesus was able to see as he was during that prayer. I think today, as we enter on this holy week, it's important for us to stop and think the sacrifice and how we as the followers of Christ we are also to, we are called all to, to receive, to, to respond to that calling. To look at that sacrifice and make those sacrifices for others. To look at that love and respond to that love. To see the path that Jesus took and take that path. Because on that journey, God will be with us. Let me read this passage. I'm going to finish with this. Hebrews 5, verse 7. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up a prayer. Jesus offered up prayers of supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from the death. And he was, he was heard because of his servant submission. Out of he was son, uh, uh, out of he was a son. He learned obedience through what, through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he made he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. Jesus alone knows what is it is to suffer, to be punished for no reason. But to take that path, he knew it wasn't easy, but he decided to go 
to take it. Today, I hope we are all encouraged to look at that path, that journey with the Lord, and take it and respond. That you feel that calling, Jesus is steering something in your heart, that's okay. Listen to that voice. Take it. Walk in obedience with the Lord. Remember, and we say it over and over, God is with you. God is with us. So whatever that is that you're going through, whatever that is that you're feeling down or do you, know, you don't know what to do, you're not walking alone. This path, God is with you. Jesus has not left us in our difficulties, especially in our difficulties. God is with us. Trust him. Trust the Lord. God will not send you without God's Holy Spirit. When he was resurrected, he was ready to say goodbye. He said, I'm going to leave something. I'm going to leave someone, the Holy Spirit. Follow him. Even though the path looks unclear, whatever that road looks like, and is not 100% clear, and it looks kind of rough and bumpy, trust him. Choose that with the Lord. Don't listen to your guts. Pray. Don't listen to social media. Go to the Father. The Spirit dwell in us. God will guide us. God will come for us. Just pray. God will strengthen through that path. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this, this word that encourages us to continue to look up before we move forward. To come to you before we go anywhere. To trust in you before we trust anything else. Bless us. Bless the church as slowly comes back into the sanctuary. I ask you, Lord, to protect all the people that are still not vaccinated, that you somehow will provide that for, that for them. And help us to continue to be in this path and this journey in your name, holding your hand, knowing that you don't leave us. You don't walk away. You're with us. Bless us as we trouble and bless us as we move forward. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together Micah 6.8. So if you are at home, please stand up as you are able, as you're making your home a sanctuary. And if you're here, please stand up and let us sing together this beautiful song that invites us to walk humbly with our Lord. I think.
seated. I'm going to invite you at home to look at your screen or um, if you know the words of the Apostles' Creed um, by heart. Please join us. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Kim to come forward as we prepare ourselves for the prayers of the people. Um, if you have not sent us your prayers request, your prayer request, um, and you have a petition, you have a need, this is the time that as the church we come together. So if you're at home um, worshiping with us, just bow your head and lift those prayers as we pray for the body of Christ. Let us pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence. And you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, especially for Rachel Noel, Juan and Carmelita, Jose Maldonado Javier, for B. Palmer and her grandma, for Pat, Audrey, Beatrice, Maria de la Luz, Quintin, for Anthony, Jesse Hansen, Dave Finkus, Mitzi Holt, Darlene Hansen, and her family. Tom Corellis, Pat, Linda, Joe, from a Magadan family, Finn House, Alicia Garcia, and her son Braden, Marty Haas, Jennifer, Jan, Becky, Ross, Ignacio Langarica, for Mariana, for the passing of her mom, Antonia Salazar, Graciela, Nayola Lemos, and for Delicia Wildermuth. We pray also for those who are dying and all who grieve. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Kim. For those that are at home um, and those that are here as well, um, I want to encourage you to continue to um, give your offerings. Um, that's the only way that we can continue to be ministry, to continue to do ministry. Um, we are doing what we can um, to keep uh, the church and the doors and everything open. But as we come back home, as we come back into church, it feels good to be here. Um, so thank God that we were able to go through this pandemic and be able to worship one way or another, but we did. And so um, as we come back and as you still, you know, not feel comfortable coming home, you, that's why we're streaming this so you can stay home. But at the same time, look, way, look for the ways that we have provided for you guys to continue to um, give your offering either online or stopping by the office or ma mailing them. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it feels nice to be able to be a part of this in this way. So thank you. Um, thank you for all the people also that give with their times and their talents. There is such a, a great group of people that are here day and night and, um, and, and, and are, are helping the ministry. It was um, nice to to, to be here yesterday, just yesterday, and my two little girls, my two little girls, they're not little anymore, Crystal and Chelsea, um, they were with me because we were heating up the food for the shelter, so we were in the kitchen, and we were playing canicas, marbles, okay, yeah, I don't know how we end up doing that as we waited for 45 minutes to heat up that food, so we looked through the window, and we saw someone out in the back, if you go on the back, we had no grass anymore, um, the sprinkles were dead, and, and but the but, but the, the grass is not, <laughs> the grass, the, the lawn is not brown, it's green from all the weeds, and they were, you know, look like a jungle. So I see someone mowing the, the, the lawn, <laughs> and, um, and it just fills my heart. I did not ask him. I did not say, can you do this? Now, at the same time happening, I see another family driving in and parking over on that side. I'm like, what are they doing here? Saturday, 3 o'clock, Okay. Mom and, uh, mom and dad, dad and son, they come in, they got out of the car and start pulling um, gardening tools. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Did they, are they talking to each other? And so they were here to do the same thing that somebody already jumped in. So they looked at, it was getting done. They put the tools back and they go on this side of the, at the front of the church and start working on that. That is, to me, amazing. So thank you to the people that are doing that. Um, you don't have to ask permission. This is your church. This is your church. So blessings on doing that. Thank you as well. Thank you for all the people that do ministry here with Pastor Ramon. So let us um, prepare ourselves with communion. So if you have your little personal, individual communion, please uh, have it ready. I know it has a little bit of uh, work to do as you get it ready with, you know, peeling the, the portions that you need to in order to get the bread and the wine uh, ready. So if you are at home and you were able to, you were able to uh, prepare yourself for communion, please go to that area that you have set up as we bless our communion on this beautiful morning that we get to um, worship. The Bible reminds us over and over that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come, come again. O God of resurrection and new life, put out your Holy Spirit on us and on this gift of bread and wine. Bless this feast 
grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and place, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and the moon and the stars, we praise you, O God, bless and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, here is the bread. Here is the wine. Here is Jesus. Come and be fed. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. We thank you, living God, for the body and the blood of your Son, which sustain us in the wilderness and the gardens alike. As Christ has loved us in this feast, so send us to love Christ and our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, Eunice, I can't remember if there was an announcement to make. Yes, yes. okay, okay, okay. I was thinking, I, I know there's an announcement to make, an important announcement. I mean, all of the announcements are important. So as, as Eunice come here, comes here to the, to the uh, podium, um, remind you that uh, all the children have their own Sunday school right after here. So if you are here with your children and you home, prep them and have them ready to take that little uh, Sunday school time with our teachers. So that is up right at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. We have confirmation seconds and fourth Sundays. Continue to do soup. This is our last soup for uh, Lent and our uh, last devotional. And then um, prepare for Holy Week. We got Palm Sunday coming up. We got Monday, Thursday on the first. We got Good Friday on the second and Easter on the 4th. So if you have not ordered your lilies, your flowers, please do so. Send us an email, do a check, and just put flowers in it so we can have flowers for the altar and uh, on doing that. So, announcement. Senate so Assembly is coming up May 1st. It's going to be online, a Zoom uh, email uh, assembly. Uh, and we can have, uh, for us it's like five, yeah, five uh, voting members. We already, the pastor is always one, and then we can have one for young, one for our Hispanic, and two others, whether they're Hispanic or not. And so, but at this kind of time, because there are um, such a short time, just a few hours, uh, you, and we are going to vote, and it's, you're gonna be in your own homes, so we, we, you need to each have a device. Now, it doesn't have to be a married couple, but we do have Zuri and um, Mac uh, going, and then we need two more. So I'd like to have you at home can be, uh, of course, considered. Please uh, speak up if you'd like to do this. Uh, it's kind of fun. I'll, I'll attend regardless <laughs> because I just always like to go. We won't have the, the extra, we won't even have a worship service this year. But we will have some speakers. We do have to vote on a few things. So it's, it's a good way to kind of get your feet wet in it if you've never gone before. 
Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's always interesting. I always love to hear the business of the church. So please, somebody st step forward, whether you're married or not, single people, or one, married, one from one married couple, one from another. As long as you have a device you, separately, then you can be a, a voting member. So give us a call. Thank you. Thank you, Eunice. I, um, so I, in talking to the uh, conference uh, meeting that I had, I asked the conference, or pastors, if there's anyone in the conference, anyone, doesn't have to be a pastor, that can do like a workshop, like a, like a one class, two days kind of thing, to kind of take us through the Synod Assembly. And um, because, you know, if you grew up in the Lutheran church, you know what the business is all about and you know how to do everything as you've probably been doing that all your life. But um, coming from the Roman Catholic and not involved in a church, I, have no, I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing in the Senate Assembly. So um, there is a lot. The second service, most of them have never been in a Senate Assembly. And so they're probably thinking, what? Um, so... This is online, so we can do it from home, and, uh, and hopefully the next time around we can go somewhere. But uh, um, it's, it is a short time versus the three days, and it's, it's from home. So if you are interested and you need to know what the business is all about, I have someone already um, that called me uh, right after the meeting that is available to kind of take us through what the Synod Assembly is all about. If you want to know a little bit more and how to vote and do all that stuff that we do as, as the business goes through. So... If you want to go, and we want to be a part of it, let us know. Uh, one last announcement really quick before we go on to every day. Um, this Saturday, 9 o'clock, this Saturday, okay? I want you to look at your schedule, and you um, got one minute. Um, we are, along with the crew, the buildings and grounds crew, he's just finding out right now that he's in charge. Um, so uh, we're going to get ready for Holy Week. And for Easter. So that means on Saturday we're going to come in. We're going to clean every single spire web we have. We're going to clean the patio. We're going to fix the garden. We are going to paint some stuff that is already old and looks really, really ugly. Um, and so we're going to do work. Okay. So 9 o'clock to noon. So if you have time and you want to come in and help us uh, shine up the church for Holy Week and Easter, we get a lot of visitors through those, through those services. So it's, it's a really an opportunity for us to shine. And so let us do that 9 o'clock this Saturday. I hope to see you all here. Otherwise, it will be my, my, uh, your pastor and his daughters. Oh, and Bill. Oh, and Bill will not be here. So... Yeah, so it would be my, uh, your pastor and his others. So I hope you guys, um, if you have time, come on over. You can do cleaning. You can do all kinds of stuff. We're going to have a long, long list of uh, things to do. Please stand as you're able. And we're going to sing every day. Every day.
acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Every day is you I live for. Every day I follow after you. Every day I walk with you, my Lord. We do very good.